what the advantage of this parliament might be, and even though I'm very skeptical because under the terms of the SCAF's uh, constitution or constitutional writing process, this parliament will have no jurisdiction to do anything mm. except assist in drafting the, par uh, the new constitution. Now under the original scheme, uh, the constitution was to be drafted by 100 members of the parliament. Now that's been scaled back to 20 and 80 are going to be appointed by the, by the army. Yeah, I don't know if that's been changed as well in the face of these protests. But the point is, once you have an elected parliament, it seems to me it's possible that you now have an institutional representation for popular forces in Egypt and they'll be able to coalesce into some sort of concrete vision for the future. Because that's what's keeping people from fully backing the revolution because they don't know what comes next. So if you have the elections, now you'll have representatives of the people together and even if they're not legally mandated to do so, they will be able to form this vision, which is, which is this futuristic vision, which so far has not been formulated. And once that's done, I think each Egyptians will be a much better place to sweep away the old regime. I still think that the underlying issue here for most of the protesters and for also a lot of the analysts and observers is the fact that the military will still uh, still will not give control to any civilian government. That I mean, all of the indications show that they're not willing to do that. The SCAF is not willing to relinquish control. So, you know, I mean, I take your point in, in sort of the idea of having these democratically and then you have the civilian body, but what is the civilian government really, what, what powers does it have? It has nothing, you know, without the military actually but, changing but, uh, its position. 